The ongoing attacks in northern Rakhine have sent many civilians fleeing from the area. Some foreign NGO workers have also left the location, concerned for their own safety. That comes after the government claimed they found foreign NGO provisions in the attacker's compound. The United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights said such statements are irresponsible and may increase the potential for further violence. Mr. Zaid Raad Al Hussein said such unsupported allegations against international aid organizations put their staff in danger and make it impossible for them to deliver essential aid. But Myanmar's health minister, who is visiting Rakhine, disagrees. How can you prove that their lives are in danger? Do you have any documentary evidence that their life in danger, it means whether they receive some sort of a threat letter? If they receive a threat, threatening letter, it is okay. But without that, we cannot speculate because the situation is such that we should never ever speculate in such a precarious situation. You know, it will fuel, you know, the situation. I don't believe that their lives are in danger. In that case, what about our doctors over there? If their lives are in danger, our doctor's life will be in danger. Our doctors are there, midwives are there, nurses are there. So it is somewhat okay, but okay means we have to be very careful. Anything can happen anytime. This is the, you know, the simmering situation. The health minister said the government has sufficient medicine for those in northern Rakhine if needed. However, delivery of the supplies will depend on the security situation on the ground. Some local healthcare workers are also concerned for their own safety in Buritown and Mongdo, especially after seeing their fellow colleague getting hurt. Attackers slashed the arm and severed this 22-year-old public health care supervisor's finger. But he's not looking for revenge. His 48-year-old mother, who was in Situate at that time, is just thankful her son's alive. Zomyo Ong is just one of about 10 patients sent here from Buditown and Mongdo because of the injuries sustained from the attackers. The incident has not only scarred him physically, but mentally and emotionally as well. Many of such patients are now afraid to even go back to the northern part of Rakhine State. And unfortunately, such attacks are also driving a greater wedge between the Rakhine Buddhists as well as the Rohingya Muslims. Mei Wong, Channel News Asia, Sitwe, Rakhine.